I give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away so you can use me. Here I am. Here I stand. Lord. Whole heart with our whole mind. God, we give you praise right now. 
we lift you up and we magnify your holy and righteous name. Father, we thank you for how you brought us through, O oh God. Hallelujah, we thank you, God, for how you continue to keep us. And Father, how you continually holding our arms up. But right now, God, we have a nation, God, that have kind of turned their back on you. And God, we ask you right now that you bring us to the place where we have to get down and begin to repent. Because revival won't come, oh God, until repentance comes. And God, we thank you right now for the revival that's about to come. And God, I thank you for the repentance of the people in their hearts right now. God, we give you praise and we give you honor. We thank you, Lord, that your spirit is going to be poured out, hallelujah, in these last days, oh God. And we give you glory and praise right now, God, for your spirit being in our midst, oh God. Now, God, God, we ask you to just have your way. We give you glory, oh God, and we have you to just take control of this service right now. Father, we come not, uh, hallelujah, in any form or fashion. We come, oh God, that we would just uplift and magnify your holy and righteous name today, God. Father, think through my mind. Speak through my lips, oh God. And Father, don't let any demon forces come and try to, uh, hallelujah, hinder your word from going forth. Father, I stand under your blood. Hallelujah, and I stand, God, with my loins girded up that I might preach your gospel, God. And I give you glory, honor, and praise in this time, in this way, in this place. And we give you all the glory. We thank you, Lord, for your power. We thank you, God, for your anointing. We thank you for your blood. And we thank you, Lord, for this time that we have to spend with you. And we give you glory. We give you all the honor. And we give you praise in Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Give God a hand praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. My God, my God, my God. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning. Around the world, Germany, Africa, throughout the U.S., Anywhere that's watching, the Philippines, hallelujah, we give you praise and honor right now in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Yes. For it's another day, and he has blessed us with another day. Say, I'm blessed. I am blessed. With another day. With another day. Say, I'm blessed. I am blessed. With another day. With another day. Say, I am blessed. I am blessed. With another day. With another day. So that day was not promised to us. This day was not promised to us, no. but God has called us, amen, to another day, to another time, to another place that we would worship and praise him and let our faith be seen. This is the time that the church has to allow their faith to be seen. Amen? Yes. Through it all. This is the time that we have to be praying for repentance. Because when we go back into history, Israel had to repent, and so our nation needs to repent because we have told God to get out. We told God to get out, get out of the schools, get off the job. We told God to get out. Amen. Turn me down a little bit on my head, Mike. Told God to get out, and guess what? How are you gonna tell somebody to get out that's blessing you every day? Amen. Mm. <laughs> That, that just don't compute, does it? No. That make a bit of sense. But because of where we have uh, went to, we've become, the Bible says that we're in this world and not of this world, but we become of this world. Because we have to begin, amen, to allow the things of this world to filter into the church, and the church looks just like the world. My Bible said that we are a, uh, a, a, a peculiar people. Turn these down right here. We are peculiar people. Right? That means that we're, we're different. That's what that means. That means that, listen, when everybody's going down the center, we're standing off to the right. Because we can be seen. Amen? We are different. And we're supposed to be different. Why? Because the spirit of the living God dwells within us. And that's the reason why we are different. And as long as the Spirit of 
the living God lives within us, we're supposed to stand to the right. Don't worry about it. The Bible says the first shall be last and the last shall be first. Even though we may stand, be standing uh, 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 in the background as Christians, guess what? God is going to move us forward because the world needs what we have. Yes. Amen? And, and as long as you continue to hold on, don't get discouraged. I encourage you to hold on right now. Without any complications in this world, guess what? We'd all be the same way, straight down the middle. But with the challenges that we have, it challenges our faith. Our faith needs to stand up and be recognized in a time like this. Because the devil is trying to make us all numb. Numb to what he's doing. Just get you used to doing what you do and what he does. And so when, when, when he gets you, gets you used to that, then guess what? Now he uh, is able to cause you to stumble. Hallelujah. He's able to cause you to stumble. But my God said that he uh, has made it where we're able, amen, to stand still and see his glory. Amen? So, I, I encourage you, that's good, I encourage you to be encouraged today. You can't be cursed. Hmm. Remember I told you you can't be cursed because the Bible says that Jesus said upon this rock I'll build my church and the very gates of hell will not prevail, cannot prevail, shall not prevail. I don't care how you say it, the devil can't hurt you unless you allow it. You have a free will and a free volition to, to uh, take and stand still and see his glory. Amen? Amen. Amen. This time we're going to have our announcements today by Sister Susie Wilson. As soon as she quit bumping her gums. I love her. Yeah, it, it's good. I, I, just, I just turned this one off. Don't worry about it. That echo I got rid of, I turned this one off. Amen. And as long as, as long as you can hear me, I'm good to go. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Happy birthday, Elizabeth Early. Amen. Fourteenth birthday is just a couple days away. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Elizabeth. Happy birthday to you. And we love you too. Yes, yeah, very special to us. On November 6th will be our Christian movie night. It will be the first Monday, or excuse me, first Friday of November, and we will be watching Faith of Our Fathers. There you go. Then on the 15th of November, we will be having our fellowship dinner after service. The church will be uh, supplying turkey. So the sign-up sheet, sheet, if you can bring a side or a and or a dessert. The sign up sheet is on the table at the back if you'll sign up so the church will know <laughs> where we need to fill in. Um, also, every Monday night between now and November 3rd, Election Day, which are two Mondays left, the Town of Neosho and the Square is having prayer. So we encourage you to join us there at six o'clock um, in the square in the Osho for prayer for the nation, for the election, for whatever you choose to pray for. On December 12th at 7.30 in the morning, there will be a men's breakfast. This is a Saturday. Volunteers are needed Amen. to cook and clean up, men only. And again, the men are encouraged to invite a 
other men to come and fellowship and well I don't know what they do I've never been to one of their meetings but I do know they worship Amen. and they eat good also. they do eat good I know this uh, the month of October is fasting and praying we will be doing that also in November if you haven't signed up for a date um, is it in the yeah it's in the board here you can see what date you did sign up for if you haven't you can sign up for a date and third ask and the eighth. fast and pray mm -hmm. i'm sorry third and the eighth that's your date that's my date awesome billy <laughs> if you can't remember it take a picture of it make a note do what you need to do but we do ask that you join us in that fasting and pray Amen. And even though uh, it's filled up, don't hesitate to put your name on there because the more of us that pray together, the more powerful it becomes. Amen. Amen. So take and get in there, get in there and put your name on there if you have not done it. Amen. Uh, when we begin to pray, things change. Okay. Yes. Uh, the acronym PUSH. Anybody know what this stands for? Pray until something happens. After there you go. So that's what we're going to start doing. We're going to start praying until something happens. Because something has to happen for this world to change. And nobody's going to change that but who? Say me. me. That's right. Through the prayers. Through the fasting. And remember, fasting is not always turning down your plate. It's yes. giving up something that you normally would do and you enjoy to take and put your flesh under subjection. Amen? Amen. So that's what we, we would like to see you do is just begin to fast and pray. The Bible says man ought to always pray. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Sister, can we do some praise and worship now? Yes. I don't know about y'all, but I, I love to praise him. <clears throat>
set free is free in me. Yes. Put the right. 
the trash can. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think. Uh, okay. Look at it. Make sure. Amen. Somebody say amen. Amen. Say it again. Amen. One more time. Amen. We're still continuing with the series, Who Are We Anyway? I pray that this series has been enlightening and has brought you a little bit closer to knowing who you really, really are. Amen. Because it's important that we know who we are. And we have to understand that God has called us to a place before the foundations of the world. Let's look at uh, John 17, uh, verse 23 through 25, if you have your Bible. I pray that you guys start bringing your Bible. I understand you use your phones and all of that kind of stuff, but it's nothing like getting into uh, the pages and, and learning the addresses of everything. Amen. I know we got it up on the up on the screen and stuff, but let's start bringing our Bibles and start turning pages so that you know the the one thing about this is when your phone goes down, the Bible is always there. The pages are there. Amen. When you in a place where you can't get reception, there's reception on those pages. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So I pray that you start using your Bibles as much as you can. And then once it becomes a habit, guess what? It becomes a part of you. Uh, John, the 17th chapter, starting with the 23rd verse, we're going to be reading through 23 and uh, 24 and 25. And it says this, In them, oh, excuse me, I in them, and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me and hast loved them as thou hast loved me. Father, I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory which thou uh, that given me. Thou lovest me before the foundations of the world. O righteous Father, the world has not known thee, but I have known thee. And these have known that thou hast sent me. Go back to verse 24, sister. I want you to pay attention to verse 24. It says, Father, I will that they also, whom thou hast given me, be with me. This is Jesus talking about us being with him. Amen? Be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory which thou hast given me, for thou lovest me when? Before. When? Before the foundation. Before the foundation of the world. Thou lovest me before the foundation. That means before anything was given, anything was spoken into existence. God loved Jesus before the foundation of the world, right? So he loved Jesus before the foundation of the world. Now, let's go over to uh, 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 Ephesians 1. Let's go to Ephesians 1. And we're going to read verses 3 through 5. It says this. He loved Jesus before the foundation of the world, didn't he? Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Now, he's blessed us with all the spiritual blessings in heavenly places according as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world 
that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestined us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to him according to the good pleasure of his will. Go back to the uh, verse 3. Look. Look at this verse. It says, Blessed be the Father, the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us. He blessed us. That blessing was the blessing of Abraham. Amen? Yes, amen. He, he told us, and the blessing of Abraham said that he would bless those that blessed us and curse those that curse us. He said, not only that, but he is going to make sure that we have what we need with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Go to verse 4. And so now he's telling us that according as he has chosen us in him. Who is the him? He chose us in Jesus. That's the him. He chose us in Jesus before the foundation of the world. Before the foundation of the world, we already have a relationship in the spirit with Jesus. Y'all better come on and listen to what I'm saying now and understand it. Before the world was even made, we had a relationship with Jesus in the spirit. Why? Because we were still in the bosom of Christ. We was in the bosom of God, and we had that relationship. We were one. Everybody say one. That's why I say one. that we should be holy. The word holy there means one. Being one and without blame before him in love. When we stand before God, when he looks at us, because of what he did before the foundation, before the world was made, he looks at us and he doesn't see any God. Why? Because Jesus had already been in place to protect us, to be that covering. Amen? To take away our sins. Go to verse 5. We still talking about who are we? Who are we? Having predestined us. Predestined means that we are scheduled. Yes. <laughs> Ordered, Ordered by God to be the children of Jesus Christ. Listen, this was all done even before he had made the world. Before he spoke anything, into it, this was already done. Why? Because God already knew that when he made Adam, Adam was going to sin. Hello, somebody. His, his, his plan for man was in place before Adam got in the garden. Before Adam took his first breath. Before Adam was even made. His plan for redemption was already in place. Yes. Because he had that God had that much foresight that he sees everything before it happens. So if we don't catch God by surprise. We may catch ourselves by surprise. But we don't catch God by surprise. He says, listen, that uh, 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 having predestined us unto the adoption of the children by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will. Listen, he has already told us that we are now Jews before the foundation of the world. He had already adopted us into the place where the Jews are. So when all of the things were going on with, with, with Israel and how they were going, Jesus was coming to the Jews and they would receive him. Jesus already knew that John was going to be the one, excuse me, Saul was going to be the one to bring us back to him. He already knew there was a plan in place. Now, I said that to say this. Don't you understand that everything that you need was already set in place before the foundation of the world. Your salvation, your healing, your health, your finances, the love that you have for your family. Everything was set in place before the foundation of the world. Listen, all we have to do is come in to the realization in the natural and start living this thing out in the spirit so it will manifest itself in our natural lives. 
Before the foundation of the world, everything had been placed in the place which should be. Amen? Now get that later. First Peter 1, uh, 19 through 21. Before the foundation of the world, I'm, I'm just trying to show you this before I get into this because uh, we're going to have to do quite a bit of reading. First Peter 1, 19 says, but with the precious blood of Christ as the lamb without blemish and without spot, whom verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world. You hear that? Yeah. <clears throat> but was manifested in these last times for you. Y'all hear that? Whom by him do believe in God that raised him up from the dead and gave him glory that your faith and hope might be in God. Go back to the beginning of that, sis. We, we've got to understand that with the blood of Christ, he was the lamb without the spot of blood. He already had Jesus prepared to go to the cross, hello, before the foundation of the world. He had no blemishes on him. He already knew how he was going to bring Jesus Christ into the world that we could be reconciled back to him. Go to the next verse. We can be reconciled back to him. Foreordained. That means that he was prepared to come before anything happened. I ask you a question. Are you prepared to go after everything's happened? Jesus was prepared to go before anything happened. So now we've got to get prepared to go as things are happening. The church has to stand up and be the church, okay? Because before the foundation of the world, uh, Jesus Christ had already been set to come and win us back. But was manifested in these last times for you. He manifested for us in the natural so that we could see it. That's why he had to go to Calvary. Hello, somebody. Y'all hearing me? Who? Who by him do believe in God? Who by him do believe in God that raised him up from the dead? God had already had everything preset that when Jesus went to the cross, he was already going to raise up. And Jesus already knew that. We just didn't know that. The world didn't know it. And Satan didn't know it. Hello. Because yeah. had Satan knew, he wouldn't have put him on the cross. He know he made a mistake when he put him on the cross because the Bible said that Jesus rose with all power. He lost he lost every bit of power he had over us. So that tells me that God had preordained us to be more powerful than Satan through Jesus Christ. Mm. Isn't that something? You, you don't have to be concerned about what's going on because Satan is just throwing smoke screens up. Amen? He's trying to keep you blinded from what God has already done before the foundation of the world. Okay? And so he says uh, that raised him up from the dead and gave him glory that your faith, whose faith? My faith. My faith. My faith. And your hope, whose hope? My, my hope. Might be where? In God. Yeah. Now, now, how can you not hope to win the game if the game is fixed? <laughs> Hello. Think about it. It's, it's kind of like back in the, in, in the 30s and 40s and when they had the boxing matches and they would fix them, the mob would take go and pay the guy off to take a fall. They know what's gonna, what the outcome's going to be because whoever that person was in the ring, if he didn't take a fall, he lost his life. But guess what? We don't have to take a fall. We can stand still and stand up and watch and see the victory. 
Because we, listen, we don't fight for victory, but we fight from victory. Because it's already won before the foundation of the world. Before one stone was here, before the waters were divided, before the birds were spoken into existence, before the trees were put in here, before the foundation of the world, before he uh, put the uh, fish and the fowl in the air, before the foundation of the world, we already had the victory. Hmm. I hope and pray I get this. I do. Because as, as God began to give it to me, it's like, wow. So, what he did, let's, let's slip over back to Genesis now. Keeping in mind what I just gave you. We're going to Genesis 2.15. It says, the Lord took the man and put him into the garden to dress it and to keep it. So, he first made us what? Farmers. Okay? And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day that thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die. And the Lord God said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a help me for him. Okay? And out of the ground, where do you make him from? Out of the ground, God formed every beast. Now, remember, he spoke them into existence. These are the same ones he spoke into existence. Just like man, he made bodies for them from the ground. Amen? Everything came from the ground. Out of the ground, God formed every beast of the field, every fowl of the air, and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name there. Let's stop right there. Before the foundation of the world, Adam was already predestined to name every animal. Yes. Before the foundation of the world, the Spirit of God had already flown through Adam's uh, 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 spirit that he would stand there and know what every one of them would be called. Okay? There was, he didn't go to school. He didn't have a textbook. He didn't have a dictionary. He didn't have no internet. He stood there and said, God, Chihuahua, German Shepherd, got down into the different species and named all the different breeds, didn't he? Elephant, fish. He, he knew all of these words and had never, ever been to school. But because of the DNA, hello somebody, I'm trying to get you to understand who you are. Because of the DNA that ran through his spirit. Uh oh, what DNA in my spirit? Yes, it is. It's the DNA of the Holy Spirit in you. Because of the DNA that runs through your spirit, you are just like God. I didn't say you were God, I said you are just like God. You know good and evil. Even though God was trying to protect us from that, Adam decided, I want to know, because he was disobedient. Well, so, so, so we've got to understand that we are just like God, because Adam stood there, and Adam began to name all of these animals and never been to a school and didn't know what they looked like. Did he? But he knew it in his spirit. Adam called every living creature that was there and gave it a name. Now, understand this. Ooh, thank you, Lord. When we look at this disease, when we look at the hurricane, when we look at the tornadoes and the storms, they give names, don't they? Yes. Yes. Remember I told you that the Bible said that uh, God said, on this rock I'll build my church, and the very gates of hell shall not prevail, did it? So since they gave him a name, the Bible says, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. And at the name of Jesus, there is no name that can stand at the name of Jesus. Think about it. Once they named it, it has no control, no power. It's gone. 
COVID, no power. We the power that it has is what we give it. The power that we have is where the media is hyping it up. And you, you got folks that come in for a cough and they call it COVID. You got folks that, why? Because they're looking for money. Because every case of COVID, they get paid for. Amen? You got, you got, you got folks that come in that may have a belly ache. They call it COVID. You got a headache. It's COVID. Listen, this is the time where our faith has to really stand up and let it be seen in the world because of the fact that the adversary is running rampant, trying to keep people's head down in the dirt like an ostrich and keep you from not seeing what's going on. Amen? But God has given us the spirit of love, power, and of a sound mind. He didn't give us a spirit of fear. Satan gave that to us, didn't he? We see here Adam standing up, naming all the creatures. Go on to the next verse, just naming all the creatures. And Adam gave names to all the cattle and the fowl of the air and every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found any help me uh, for him. So we got to understand that we are people that are not supposed to be alone. He goes on, go to verse 21 on that. Did you load that? Okay, never mind. But he goes on <laughs> in that scripture and he begins to talk about how it's not good for man to be alone. We're not supposed to be alone. We have to have some type of companionship. That doesn't mean you have to get married. That means that you got to have some type of companionship. And you uh, must have a companionship with who? God. Why? Because we are, Adam said when he made, when, 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 when he made woman, well, she's bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. I'll call her woman. But we're spirit of his spirit. Think about that now. Huh? He's the God that runs through our veins. We're blood of his blood. We're his sons and daughters. We're a part of his kingdom. We just sang a song that says, I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. Listen. Whom the son set free is free indeed. We were set free before the foundation of the world. So, there is nothing in this world that can come back and recapture us. If we don't want it, it won't happen. Matthew 18 and 18, whatever you bind, whatever you lose. If we don't want it, it won't happen. But if you don't know, the Bible says, my people perish, why? Lack of knowledge. Hello, because of lack of knowledge. So if you don't know who you are, if you don't know what God has already done for you, if you don't know the freedoms you have, if you don't know the power you have, then guess what? Now you fall under the, the pressure that Satan puts on you. But when you know who you are, when you know the freedoms that you have, when you know the power that you got, then guess what? You don't have to bow your head. You don't have to fall. All you got to do is stand there and pro proclaim the blood of God. That's it. Because he's all powerful. He's all knowing. He sits high and he looks low. He said you're the head and not the tail. You're above and not beneath. You're the lender and not the borrower. Why? Because he set that in place before the foundations of the world. Yeah. We are not claiming the inheritance that God has set forth for us. We're living beneath our privilege. We're, we're allowing the adversary to come in and take what don't belong to him. Because just like Adam, when Adam stood there and he bit of the fruit that his wife was giving, even though he should have told the devil, you know, you get out of here. He stood there and he allowed the adversary to come and afflict Eve and then he 
came under the guise of what Eve was talking about, and he never the fruit. And all he had to do was say no. And he said, what Paul Bush said, just say no. <laughs> That's all he had to do, was just say no. But he fell under the, the pressure. Why? I'm going to tell you, say, say something that's going to make some of y'all think a little bit because he didn't know who he was. That's what we do. He didn't know who he was. And the Bible goes on and says that after he ate of that fruit that he realized, oh, I'm naked. Why? Because God can see my sin now. Not the flesh, but God can see the sin that I put myself in. I've sinned. And now I've got to take the time and I've got to try to hide the sin that I'm in. When God made me perfect, he made me to be just like him. There was no mistake. But once I bit of that fruit, the fruit of sin, I don't care if it was apple, banana, pineapple, whatever it was, it's the fruit of sin. We have to start taking the time and understanding who we are. We, 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 we fall short because of our words. Our words. Oh, this thing's killing me. Really? James said, your tongue sets on fire the very course of nature. <laughs> so now, since you spoke it, it's got to happen. Why? Because God said, my word shall not go out and return unto me void. That goes for you and me both. What we speak is going to return back to us. The Bible says it like this. You reap what you sow. Because your words become seed. And when your seed goes out and it gets planted in the earth, it comes back and it grows. But we have to learn how to plant good seed in good ground and understand that we were the first and the only farmers in this land. And it was, as God said, very good. Everything that he made was very good. It wasn't until Adam bit of the fruit that the curse came. Once the curse came, now that's why our bodies get sick. Yeah, that's, 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 that's the reason why we have pain. That's the reason why you women have pain in childbearing, because of the sin, the curse. But before the foundation of the world, God said that we have life and death where? In our time. The power of life and death is in our tongue. And all we got to do is speak it and believe it. That's what God said. Listen, uh, 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 when we start walking through this thing and we really start uh, looking at it, we understand that the temptation is going to come. Okay? We understand that we can overcome temptation because God has given us a way of escape. <coughs> mm -hmm. We understand that no matter what the adversary puts on us, he can't curse us. Go with me, if you will, to Genesis 4, 25 and 26. <coughs> Going from Genesis 1, we see Well, Genesis two. Let me just give you this. Uh, go, go to Psalm. Go, go to Psalm one fifteen, sixteen. Sister, I'm sorry. Everybody, read that. Let's read it aloud together. Go. The, earth, the heaven, even the heaven of the Lord, but the earth has He given to the children of men. That's me. Everybody said that's me. That's me. Guess what? God said, I got the heavens. You got the earth. That's why he told Adam to
to till the ground, to take care of the earth. I've given it to you, and everything that you need is there. I'm not going to come back and give you more. And because you have uh, sin and the curse has come upon you, guess what? You still have the ability to claim victory. Isn't that something? What a God we serve. Why? Because the heaven belongs to God, but the earth belongs to us. So when the earth gets out of, out of proportion, when it gets blown up, we shouldn't be going and saying, God, help me fix this. You know what they're going to say? You fix it. <laughs> Why? Because he gave it to us to fix. How are we fixing it? Not in the physical, but in the spiritual. Not in the natural realm, not in the Babylonian kingdom, but in the kingdom of God through the spirit. That's the only way we can fix this thing. When, when, when the storms of life begin to rage, guess what? Just like Jesus, hallelujah, stood out on the water when the disciples had were on the boat and the boat began to shake and rock and roll, he said, peace be still. David, and you can say, be still. Let me, let me share something with you. Revelation. When Jesus was walking, had sat across the water, and remember when Jesus was walking on the water, and, and, and they all got afraid, they were looking, and they said, it's a ghost. And Peter said, no, that's not a ghost, but it looks like Jesus. Lord, if it's you, and I'm just paraphrasing, use my own words. If it's you, let me come out there. God said, what? Do y'all understand what's in that word come? Here's Jesus walking on the water. He said, come. What does that say to you? Be like me. Walk on the water. Hello, somebody. Come, be like me. Walk on the water. Peter believed it, didn't he? Mm -hmm. What did he do? He stepped out and walked in the water. People say, ain't no man that walked in the water. Peter walked in the water. He walked out to Jesus. Guess what? The Bible said that when Peter sank, he was within arm's reach of Jesus. So he came away from the boat, didn't he? Mm -hmm. Jesus told him, come, be like me. Do what I do. He still tells us today, come, be like me. Do what I do. You can walk on the water. Just keep your eyes on me. You can move the mountain. Just keep your eyes on me. You can tell the storm to stop raging. Just keep your eyes on me. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Just be like me. Come and be like me. That's what Jesus is telling us. He's already made us in his image. Now, come do what I do. That's why he said greater things you'll do. Why? Because you're going to do the things that I do, but you're going to do even greater things. What were some of the greatest things? Peter shall begin to heal folks. Jesus didn't ever walk past nobody in the shadow of him, did he? But he tells us to come and sit under the shadow of his wings. Come on. I'm trying to get you to the place where you understand that what you do can be accomplished in the spirit and there's nothing impossible for you because Jesus said, come and do what I do. Come heal the sick. Come raise the dead. Come make the blind eyes see. Come make the dumb tongue talk. Come open the ears of those that can't hear. Do what I do. Be like me. Let this mind, see that's why we got to change our mind because the Bible says in Romans 12 and 2 that, that we should not be conformed to the world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind by getting the mind of Jesus Christ in us. Let this mind be in you that's in Christ Jesus. Christ Jesus didn't think anything was impossible, did he? Nothing. Why do we think? Why do we feel like 
It's impossible for us to do. And you hear a lot of folks when you say things that they can't fathom, that they can't see. Oh, you can't do that. Why can't I? Jesus did it. How come you can't do it? If Jesus did it, you can do it. And guess what? Anything that Jesus didn't do, you're still able because he has already equipped you to do it in your spirit. God wants us to be a people that have the mind that I can do anything. And he's even given us the word that says, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. He did. And a call according to his purpose. That call according to his purpose, that's when he calls you out of the darkness into his light. His purpose was that you would live. Hello. His purpose is that you use yourself to be a light that someone else would live. Hello, somebody. His purpose. He called us out of the darkness. He gave and put a call on our life, and that's why he told every one of us, when he told his disciples to go, he told us to go. And we must learn how to walk in the Spirit. We can't win this world in, in, in the flesh. Jesus told, him, told, 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 told Peter, he said, come on out here. Peter stepped out there. And as soon as Peter looked at the water and his mind started talking about, Peter, look at those waves. Look at the white water coming over your head, Peter. You know you ain't supposed to be out here. The devil don't talk to us like that. Somebody say, but Jesus. But Jesus. <laughs> The blood of Jesus is what keeps us. And guess what? When Jesus tells us to do something, I don't care what it is, get out there and do it. When, when, when the spirit of the living God begins to speak to your heart, because the earth he's given to us, there's nothing impossible for us to do on this earth. Why? Oh. Because he has seated us in heavenly places to be able to access the kingdom. Everybody say access. Access. <laughs> okay. <laughs> to be able to access the kingdom. That, that, that you, as you sit in those heavenly places, See, that's what our prayer life is about. Our prayer life is about going about changing the world. When we access uh, the kingdom by understanding and knowing, I gotta get down here because I'm too far away, by understanding and knowing that, listen, we have been made before the foundation of the world in his image, and we have had a seat before the foundation of the world in heaven that we can access anything that we want that's in heaven as long as we're accessing it in the spiritual realm. God doesn't bless us in our flesh in that, in, in that area. He blesses us in the spirit. That's why when he gave the blessing to Abraham, amen, he gave it to him in the spirit and Abraham put it in his spirit and he walked with it and it manifested in the flesh. The manifestation comes in the natural because you believe it in your spirit. I got to ask you. Do you? Tell them. <laughs> do you believe it? Do you believe that God said that you can be the head and not the tail? Do you believe that God said that you're above and not beneath? Do you believe that God said that you are peculiar? a special people, a priesthood of people, that you're kings and queens and you're royalty. Do you believe that? Do you believe that before the foundation of the world that God allowed you to become a Jew? My goodness. Do you believe that? See, when, 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 when you grab a hold of that, it makes you excited because you understand that you can get anything you need because he's supplying it, but what you want you can get. Now, when God gives you 
your wants. It's not for you. It's not. Because guess what? You live off the overflow. What's in the account goes to the kingdom. What do I mean by that? Take your mind off of money. I'm talking spiritual. It's not money. It's spiritual. When you get a spiritual download in you and you get full, you, you feel like, I got to tell somebody. I got to, that's nothing more than God trying to get you to give out of your account, your spiritual account. To let somebody know that Jesus is alive and they can live too. Okay? You're living off the overflow. And, and, and guess what? He said that seek ye first the kingdom of heaven, didn't he? That means seek the spiritual things. And then all other things, the earthly things, the money, the house, the car, and all that shall be added. Why? Because he don't want us to be poor. Well, how can you help somebody when you're not when you're poor? You can't. But first you've got to get a change of mind. First you've got to get your mind in gear and get your spirit right. God is not going to allow you to receive the things of this earth in abundance until your spirit gets right. He's not. Why? Because they will control you. Okay? Once you get to the place where you surrender and give it all to God, guess what happens? Now the stuff doesn't control you because you know what? It's just a byproduct of what's going on in your spirit. And it doesn't matter <laughs> whether you have it or not. You know why? Because you know your source. You know who he is and you know who you are and you know what can be done in your life just by simply speaking it. Greater things. God said, let there be. Can't you say let there be? When God spoke, he didn't say, well, I hope this works. <laughs> let there be. No. But that's what we do. We get out there and say, oh, well, Let it be. <laughs> God wants us to speak in confidence. Let there be. And walk home. And understand that guess what? Everybody say before the foundation of the world. Before the foundation of the world. This is where all of this comes from. Before the foundation of the world, it was already said so. Listen. Whatever comes out of your mouth, before the foundation of the world, it was already provided but you got to get from the posture of the natural into the spiritual. And you got to learn how to walk in the spirit. That's why the Bible said that those that worship me must worship me how? Spirit and in truth. Hello. And be ye holy because I'm holy. That word holy, we want to make it look like something that's so hard to obtain. The word holy, when God is used, it just means be one. Don't, don't, don't be the James that's holy and, and all godly when he comes to church. And then when I get out of church, I'm over here drinking and gambling and got a whole new lifestyle. That holy says, I'm the same way in church as I am in the world. No difference. Jesus said, I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever, didn't he? And that's the same thing with us. We should be the same yesterday, today, and forever. Once we become children of God, we should not change. We should just get better, get more like Christ. That's why Jesus says he's the same all of the time. We've got to start being the same all of the time. I don't care. You don't need the world to be your friend. Now, but hear me, you don't need your world to be your friend. Because the Bible says that if the world is your friend, you're enmity to God. What does enmity mean? Enmity means that there's a hatred for God. Yeah. If you're not in God, 
then there's an enmity between you and God. That's why when, when the adversary, the snake, and Eve, back in Genesis, God told him, I'll put an enmity between you, her seed and your seed. He'll stomp on your head and you'll strike at his heel. That's why people have a fear of snakes. Because there's that enmity, there's that hatred. Guess what? We've got to get rid of the enmity to God. How do we do that? We get rid of the things of the world. We stop loving the world. See, do you, some folk would say, well, well, God so loved the world. Yeah, he had a different love. He loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that we might become sons and daughters. But we've got to learn that now is the time. This time, right here, in the time of darkness. Hello, because this is a dark time in the world right here. In the time of darkness. See, and when you start going through the generations, Adam and Eve, Cain and Abel, when you hit Seth, guess what? It says, when Seth showed up in the world, this is the time when men begin to call upon God. So there was a dark period there. Right now it's a dark period in this world. Men have stopped calling on God. Hello. And now the church. We had what? 2000, I mean 9-11 uh, was what? 2001? 19 years. It's time for the repentance of the body of Christ to come. 2000. 2000, yeah. But still, time for the repentance. It's 2001, yeah. Of the body of Christ to come. That's the same thing that happened if you go back in the Bible when Israel repented and stuff. That's 19 years. God gives us a time for repentance, folks. Who are you in God? Who are you anyway? You should be just like God. Just like Jesus. Am I there yet? No. But I'm working hard at it. Okay? That's why the Bible tells us that we need to be casting down every imagination. Those thoughts that come into your mind that don't belong to you, that don't, that not God, that you, that's not my thought. I cast it down. When the language starts to run, listen, you'll never get rid of the old man. You'll never get rid of him. He's always there. Okay? All he's doing is waiting on his chance to raise his head. That's why Paul said that there's a battle going on inside of me. When I want to do right, I don't. Wrong is right there. Guys, the old man is never going away. But the new man can thrive. The new man can get stronger and get higher. The new man. Why? Because once you find out who you are, once you find out the promises of Jesus, the promises of God, once you start walking in those promises, and once you start to understand that what I say matters to God, and he will perform what I say to do. As <clears throat> long as I'm standing under the blood and in the spirit, he's going to perform. Why? Because guess what? Everybody that had children in here, you understand and, and you'd be like, ooh, when somebody said, well, you know, your child has such and such and such a thing. It's a good thing. You kind of raise your chest up and say, ooh, that's my, that's my baby, right? That's the same way God does with us. When we stand up with you and we bruise the head of the enemy and everybody sees it, that's what's called letting your light shine. He raises his chest and says, that's my child. He's a proud father. And guess what? Every time my children go and do things extraordinary, I'm a proud father too. So God has patterned us just like him. When we when when we do wrong, 
He chastises us, doesn't he? When your children do wrong, you chastise them. That doesn't mean you don't love them. It just means you don't want them to do what they're doing anymore. Who are you anyway? See, I'm a child of God. Yeah. I'm a king's kid. Yeah. There's a whole lot of, there's a whole different array of answers because we are a peculiar people. And all of those answers, just like, just like Jesus has all the different names, God has all the different names, so do we. And each one of the names has power and means something. That's why the Bible says that he will change our names and glory. So I ask you, Take this message here and start really thinking about who you are. Start really thinking about what you're doing. What is your mission on life? What's your mission on this earth? See, Jesus came with a mission. He did. He didn't just, just pop down here and say, well, let me see what I can do. He came here to seek and save the lost. He came to seek. He came to seek. He came to seek. Why do I keep saying that? Because we need to be seeking. We need to be seeking. Okay? We need to be seeking the lost that we might tell them about Jesus. And we need to be seeking the kingdom of heaven. At the same time. Why? Because the Bible says, broad is the way that leads into destruction, and many there be to go in there at. They're not looking. But narrow is the way that leads into the kingdom, and I just paraphrase, into the kingdom, and few there be that find it. We got to be seeking. We got to be looking for opportunities to share God. We got to be looking for the kingdom of God. That means that when we end that word, we've got to take every word there and begin to uh, do what we do as far as trying to apply it to our lives. What about you today? Are you seeking? Are you really seeking? What are you doing? Are you just coming to church as a ritual? Do you just pray just because that's the thing to do? We need to be pinpointing the things that we desire or want <clears throat> for Christ. We need to be telling Him what we desire. And be tenacious about it. You remember when, when King Jehoshaphat, when, when they were had to go and they were going to fight the battle and they had all the nations coming against us? King Jehoshaphat began to tell them, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, God, you, you sent us here. <clears throat> and when we was coming through the land, we could have destroyed these folk. But you told us no. And now you're going to come and let them take this land that you gave to us? Hmm. God don't mind you talking to him like that. But you got to be in the right spirit. Mm -hmm. And you know what he told Jehoshaphat? He said, listen, all I want y'all to do is go out there on the land, just go out on the hill and just sit there and watch what happens. And he made them all fight against one another and kill one another. And he said, now go down and get the spoils. It took them three days to carry the spoils off. And they didn't, they didn't, they didn't raise a sword. What are, you, what are we doing? What's our purpose? Are we prepared to go into battle? This is a dark period again, I'm going to tell you. This is the time that man needs to begin to seek God again. This is our time. This is the church's time to begin to seek God again. 
It's not going to be you because the devil is going to do everything he can to stop you from seeking. But you got to do it. Trouble's going to come. All sorts of things are going to happen. But you know what? There ain't nothing. <laughs> and I mean there ain't nothing that can stop you. The only person that can stop you is you. 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 Me. Okay? Let's stand. Who are we in? I want, that, I want that question just to ring in your spirit. Who am I? Let's make it personal. Who am I anyway? Why am I here? What am I supposed to do? Well, the only person to give you that answer is God Almighty. So you need to start seeking. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come today. I thank you for your word, oh God. I thank you that you allowed your spirit to speak through me. God, I ask you to touch each and every heart that's here and those that are listening, oh God, to the broadcast. I ask you to touch their hearts. and Father, let them see the journey that they're on. And not only let them see the journey that they're on, but Father, let them know where they're going, their destination, God what they're supposed to be doing. Lord, help us to uh, embrace the journey and know that we know that we know that as we walk each step, God, that you're right there with us and that you won't allow us to fall or falter or stumble. God, you're going to be there holding us up. And Lord, that you're going to use us Regardless of what the world is doing, regardless of how the fear is running rampant in this place, God, I, I thank you for your spirit that reassures us that we can do all things through Christ. And that's the key is we have to be in you in order to do what we do. And God, I thank you right now for blessing us with the Abrahamic blessing, with the power, with the authority to take control of this earth and live, oh God, in a place, hallelujah, that we can make it better and we can help somebody else, Lord God, as we travel along our way. Now, God, I ask you to take this word and help them to understand it just like you have given it to me, God, and let it uh, uh, dwell richly within their spirits and their souls, oh God. Let them continue to chew on it. And Father, give them the nuggets that they need in their life to become better soldiers in your army, to become better children in the family, to become better parents and uh, better uh, uh, stewards of the things that you've given to us. God, I thank you right now and I praise you. Father, if there's anyone here that's sick, <clears throat> we ask you to send healing, God, right now in the name of Jesus. And we claim it and we say it's done. Father, if there's one that, in the sound of my voice, that don't know you as their Lord and Savior, God, I ask you to just touch their hearts right now. And Father, have them to just turn their life over to you. Lord, we say different prayers to lead them to Christ, but God, you know the heart. And I ask you to just touch their heart, God, and just let them feel your joy, and your peace, and your power. That they'll turn their life around, God. And I thank you, God, for what you're doing in their life. Father, I give you praise. And I ask you, Father, those that are in financial straits, that you would come and you would just let them feel and see the blessing of Abraham upon their life. Father, you said that 
You'll bless those that bless us and curse those that curse us. And that we will be a blessing to many nations. And God, we thank you for us being a blessing for the nations. And God, let us be the spiritual <coughs> leaders in this world as you call us to be. Father, let us walk on the water in the places, oh God, that may be dry. Let us bring the water. And God, we give you praise and honor. <clears throat> in Jesus' mighty name and all of God's children said. Amen. 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 <clears throat> Folks, where is the echo coming from? Turn my mic down. Folks, I ask you to just take the time and really, really, really think about this message. Because this message will set you free. I mean, really set you free, completely free, if you will apply it to your life. Amen. And God bless you. And God keep you. So the gift looks like that didn't work. Oh, okay. Part, my, my shoe. Oh, that's what I forgot to announce the rest of it. Yeah, the give a five button has been set up, so if you want to give online, you can. Pastor. Huh? <clears throat>